down with us. We'll now go to the media for questions for Kyle. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll work to get a mic too, and we'll start in the back with Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Um, last three years, uh, IndyCar, NASCAR, been at this, this track racing at the same time. Um, are you a fan of that weekend? Have you, have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I think it's pretty cool, kind of unique. Um, but, you know, if I'm being selfish, I think many of us drivers and crews and everything else, we'd rather be coming here and racing around the Oval and the prestige and the history of what the Oval is. Um, even though we're at Indy, it just doesn't really feel like it's – the same thing uh, going the wrong way. In looking at the schedule next year, you guys more than likely are going to end up being on the oval. And so, and then this weekend is probably going away, at least here. Is this something you'd like to see incorporated elsewhere, or, you know, whatever track that is, and it's something that should continue going forward, even if it can't be here? Well, I mean, that's for way smarter people and higher powers than me to make that decision. So, um, you know, if it works for IndyCar and it works for NASCAR, then I would say, sure, you know, why not? Um, there's plenty of Places that we can do it, we could do it together, um, stuff like that. You could even do it at Watkins Glen together if you wanted to, where um, all you got to do is move some cones and the IndyCar guys can run the boot and we can run our normal course, but you can still be on the same uh, essential track uh, during the weekend. Um, you know, so there's definitely plenty of opportunities to continue the, the camaraderie between the paddocks and garage area um, to, uh, to have an IndyCar NASCAR double. All right, Kelly. Kelly Crandall, Racer.com. Kyle, you've been very outspoken in the past about restarts on road courses <clears throat> into turn one, particularly, whether it's here or Coda. With the restart zone being backed up between 13 and 14 this weekend, is there any optimism that will help at all for turn one? Um, possibly a little bit. Um, I think the only other way to help it even more would just call it right now and just go single file. Um, you know, and, and make it single file starts going down the front stretch into turn one. You've got to separate these guys and give them some separation because they have absolutely no respect and they just drive over each other, you know. Uh, we see it every week. We see it on ovals. Um, you know, Blaney wanted to be mad last week, and yet he crashed me and he almost crashed the seven, and he's mad. So it makes no sense. But um, fact of the matter is, is, yeah, everybody – goes down in a turn one, they know you got to be on the inside and you just pile drive through from the inside and push people off. On the single file restarts, um, Elton had said on Sirius earlier this week that that is something they will keep in their back pocket for this weekend, not just for weather. So you would like them to consider that more maybe on these road courses that if it looks like it's getting out of control, kind of save you guys from yourselves? Thousand percent. No question. Yep. Got to make the call. Don't be afraid to make the call. All right. Go ahead. Steven Stump, Frontrush.com. Kyle, to add on to that, um, in addition to the road courses, especially the ones with the wide turn ones, um, any any late race caution can often, you know, lead to some pretty chaotic results. You mentioned, you know, being in support of single file restarts in that case. Would you be supportive of single file restarts really at, at, with like under 10 to go in any race? Um, no, no, I don't think so. Um, obviously, yes, it would be easier if you're the leader. Um, but it would probably diminish the show. So we're, we're, we're an entertainment business, I'm learning, and, um, you know, we want to be able to put on a, whether it's a good show or a bad show that's debatable between opinions, right? So, um, but we want to be able to put on the best possible show for the fans that we can. So um, I, I think that would be a deterrent uh, to many of the races that we go to. Um, but when you, like Kelly said, you know, save us from ourselves um, to just not allow calamity to ensue. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan. NBC wow, Sports. welcome back. Glad to see you. I've, I've been around. It's been a while. I asked you a question at Richmond two uh, weeks ago. I don't remember. <laughs> You're I'm not hurt. like Bob. Bob's I'm, here every day. I'm hurt. Um, when SBG won at Chicago, there was a lot of focus on his right foot, heel toe, breaking technique. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to heel toe? No. Not successfully. I know how to do it, and I can do it, but it is very clunky. I am not a, a, a smooth operator when it comes to uh, having to do the heel toe. I did it years ago um, when I first kind of came in. Like, I was learning from Boris Said and Fellows and a couple of those guys just talking with them. And, you know, wheel hop issues with the old car, it would really kind of help subside that. But then we just went to work on the car and the braking and everything else. And to me, every time I'm able to just maximize my left foot, for break, 
um, I'm way better off. So I've kind of gotten away from it. Okay. So it wouldn't even be really be worth the trade off of trying to do it or trying to learn it. Right. Yeah. yeah. For me, no, because like we came, the Chevy guys. Thank, thanks to Chevy for letting us come over here. We did a, a test with some um, street Camaros around here, and um, I tried it. You know, like I tried to do the right foot over brake, use the clutch, um, and do the downshifts and stuff like that. And I was like a half a second slower than just using the brake and matching the RPMs for the downshifts. All right, additional questions for Kyle? All right. Perfect. Kyle, appreciate you spending yep. time with us today. Thanks.